Test one, two, can you hear me? Hello, hello, can you hear me now? Yep, just fine. You are in the meeting now. There are 11 participants in the meeting. This meeting is being recorded. You are muted. You can mute or unmute yourself by pressing star 6. Are 
Yeah, so we don't usually stop recording until we start the meeting. That's all right. Good evening, everybody. Turn yours down a little bit. Um, oh, we got, we got, we got two, two computers going, going, so I'm getting a little bit trying to turn it down. I just muted you. You muted me? On my, my thing. Okay. Can everybody hear me? I can hear you, Kevin. Yes, I can hear you loud and clear. Yeah, we can hear you. All right. So it's uh, 6.15. We have a quorum present. I will call the meeting of the Freetown Conservation Commission to order. Before we get started, I need to uh, read the governor's order right quick. The Governor Paper June 16, 2021 order extending the March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, General Law Chapter 30. I think we lost you there, Kevin. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. We, we can hear you now. All right. All right. So no in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. In the event that we are unable to do so, despite best efforts, we will post on the town's website or YouTube channel an audio or video recording, transcript, or other comprehensive record of proceedings as soon as possible after the meeting. Thank you again for indulging me on that. Okay, before we get started, we have some continuation requests, and I'll just knock those out right now. When's our next meeting, uh, Caitlin? 24th. The 24th. Uh, a zoo had contacted us, and uh, just as an aside, a zoo is home uh, recovering from surgery. So if everybody could just keep them in mind and wish them the best. Uh, so I will call to order items number two and items number three. They're both notice of intents filed by the same engineering firm. One is for a 67 Chase Road and the other is for off Chippeway Road. This is a, a um, solar arrays. And again, he's uh, recovering from surgery and it asked that we continue to the meetings in February. So if uh, January 24th and then the week later is the 31st. And after that will be February 7th. Everybody available February 7th? I should be, Kevin. Perfect. I, I am. Excellent. I, I am too. And it's great to have a full complement of, of, of the board here too. So, all right, yeah. that being said, with the request from the, the engineer, I'll entertain a motion. And Margaret, because it's a Zoom meeting, we have to do roll call votes for everything that we do. So I will call your name and you simply say yay or nay, depending on how you feel about a particular item. Um, you've gotten your, you, you've been sworn in, Margaret? Yes, I have. So items number two and number three, both of those are notice of intents. Uh, I'll entertain a motion to continue the public hearings for those notice of intents to February 7th, six o'clock via Zoom. I'll make so, the motion. Oh, I'll second it. Roll call vote. Charlie Sullivan. Aye. Keith Mello. Aye. Margaret French. Aye. Aye. Kevin Damaris, I motion passes. Okay. Next, we have a continued notice of intent for zero and five, uh, zero rear and five cost to drive. Margaret, this is the location that we went on our stroll through the woods. And I'm yes. <laughs> making very light of that stroll, but um, <clears throat> they're still in peer review and they've asked for a continuance uh, to. 
our next meeting, which would be the 24th. So I will call that public hearing back to order. And again, the, I spoke with the applicant today. They want to continue it till, uh, till the 24th. So I'll entertain a motion to continue the public hearing for the uh, zero rear and five cost to drive to January 24th, six o'clock via Zoom. So moved. I'll second it. Motion has been made and supported. If there's no further discussion on the motion, hearing none, uh, roll call vote, Charlie Sullivan. Aye. <clears throat> aye. It's not an aye. Great, thank you. Keith Mello. Aye. Mello, aye. Margaret Frank. Aye. That's aye. All, all in favor. Uh, Kevin, you're dying them for some reason. I'm sorry. What was that, sir? You're 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 losing your audio for some reason. I don't know if you're moving your you're against the speaker or what, but yeah. Really. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can. Loud and All clear. right. I think I, I still had my phone on, so it was probably interfering. All right. So thank you, Charlie. So uh, item number five, we have a continued notice of intent for 43 Water Street. I will call that back to order. If you remember, this was for the installation and construction of a uh, dock, boat dock. Uh, additionally, uh, the eradication of invasive species, Phragmites. Uh, that being said, uh, this is still in peer review currently, and they've asked for a continuation to the 24th. So I've called that public hearing back to order again for 43 Water Street. Applicant has asked for a continuation to the 24th. So I will entertain a motion to continue it to the 24th, six o'clock via Zoom. So moved. What did you call? I'll support the gentleman's motion. Motion being supported. There's no further discussion on the motion. Hearing none. Uh, roll call vote. Charlie Sullivan. Aye. Charlie Sullivan, aye. Chris Mather. Aye. Another aye. Keith Mello. Aye. Mello, aye. Margaret French. Aye. Margaret French, aye. Kevin DeMaris, aye. Motion passes unanimous. I believe, Caitlin, that is all of our uh, continuations, correct? The next thing on our agenda, we have item number six. This would be our good friend Alex over at the uh, Mill Brook Boggs Restoration Project. So I will call that public hearing back to order. Kevin, just a point of order. Uh, how about number one on the. Uh... I apologize, Charlie. Yes, thank you. Caitlin was pointing that out too. Well, I will. Uh, 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 all right. So I will, if you don't mind waiting, Alex. We're going to go to item number one here. This is for a notice of intent for 81 Middleborough Road. This is a brand new filing with us. Uh, this is for, it looks like a, um, a delineation. Okay. Uh, just for a delineation right now. And we have Mr. Nasser here, I see. Thank you for joining us, sir. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. All right, so I will call that public hearing to order. Okay. So we have an ANRAD which is an abbreviated notice of area, resource area delineation. Uh, unfortunately, we'd have problems with the town's website. Uh, so uh, if need be, we can allow people to do a screen share. Uh, and uh, for Conservation Commission members, you were sent an email on Saturday uh, from Caitlin and Conservation Commission. It's got, a, it's got Dropbox links in it. So if you need to, you can follow along that way too. Uh, and if need be, we, we might be able to uh, do a screen share if we have to. So, uh, Mr. Nasser, if you'd like, go right ahead. Sure. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman and Commission members. My name is Robert Nasser. I'm here as the applicant for an abbreviated notice of resource area delineation at 81 uh, Middleborough Road for a Brown Mount uh, solar array project. Um, I'm here with Greg Drake from Outback Engineering. And I also expected um, the Ashley, members from the Ashley family who are the, the landowners to be here. I'm not sure if they're on phone or not. I don't see a tag for them, but they, uh, I'm expecting that they, they may call in as well. Um, well, just a quick overview of the project. It is approximately uh, two thirds of an acre uh, behind the garage at the Ashley's, Elton Ashley's house on Middleborough Road. Um, 
there's prior it's a 149 kilowatt uh, ac um, solar array ground mount that's approximately 500 uh, solar panels um, and although while we believe that we meet all of the requirements to proceed directly uh, for construction permits at this point, after consultation with, uh, with Greg and with the landowners, with some other folks, we thought that um, out of an abundance of caution and really to be prudent, um, that the ANRAD uh, process would be, uh, make sense in this case. I mean, the last thing that we want is to start a project and then have questions arise while we're in the middle of construction um, and we have these very expensive subcontractors specialty subcontractors out there and stop the project so everyone agreed that this was um, the the uh, the best way to proceed and i think we're all in agreement with that and really we're at um the just your discretion whatever the pleasure of the board is we could uh, make a presentation. Greg could talk about the project a little bit more. We could answer questions. I'm not sure. How would you like to proceed, Mr. Chairman? Thank you, Mr. Nasser. So the fact is what you're asking us tonight is to agree or disagree with your delineation, right? So we are not considering any of the work that's being proposed or anything like that. And I imagine if, if we agree with your delineation, you probably or may not even have to come to Conservation Commission. And I want to express my gratitude also um, in that, and, and this is the way I put it to, to Mr. Nasser when talking with him. Sure, there probably are upland bogs. They've done their due diligence, and I believe they are. And if I go back and look at historical documentation, it's a very interesting story about, Mr., uh, about Sonny Ashley's uh, dad or granddad. I'm, I think it was his dad who first, uh, I don't want to say discovered, but uh, um, implemented and utilized upland bog cranberry grown back in the day. It was a very, very interesting article to, to read on that. So, uh, but the the common sense you drive by, somebody's putting up uh, uh, solar rays on or over a bog or near a bog, uh, you're going to have the questions. And this was an easy way. Uh, this is an easy way to get that uh problem taken care of to your point Mr. Nasser we don't need somebody down the road saying that we didn't do our due diligence uh, only to uh, uh, delay the project so typically uh, and again on ANRADS Mr. Nasser we don't we don't particularly if it's not going to come before the board we don't need to get into the 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 nuts and bolts of the project that's not what you're seeking permission from us tonight for uh, so usually in these instances we send this out for a minor peer review to ask them to go out there and 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 review the what the documentation that excuse me you provided they typically go out do a, a site walk to just confirm what they're looking at and then we get something back from them in a couple weeks so that's really where we are with this uh, in the meantime usually we would try to schedule an inspection for us to get over there and take a look at it ourselves uh, so that's that's kind of where we stand with with this right now mr. Nasser Sure, that sounds fine with me. I think um, just let us know what you'd like to do for the next step, and uh, we're prepared to, to, to so, do that. So I don't know if we have, um, I don't know if we've received a uh, review fee. No, you haven't. I haven't given you a review fee. I uh, we when we met, you know, a few weeks ago, we had talked about that. I decided that it would be best just to. Um, wait until the meeting if you wanted uh, you know I can have a review fee down to your office whatever the board commission believes is appropriate to get us going um, I'm happy to do that and I can have that to uh, the commission's office this week Perfect. now um, we're not quite at the point yet for uh, a filing with the planning board correct obviously we want to get the delineation approved then you can design you've done the bulk of it I'm pretty sure right but, but let's just say there was a minor change to the delineation, if any, and you had to make a minor change. So just so you know, whatever review is being done on the wetland side of things, that will also be utilized when it goes to a planning board. We, utilize, we, we use the same uh, peer review. 
So there won't be redundancy. My, in other words, what I'm saying is you're not going to get charged twice to get the delineation uh, checked by the planning board also, okay? Sure. All right. So that being said, does anybody from the board have any questions? Uh, my intent is to send it off to peer review. We'll get, we'll contact them and get what it would cost. We, they typically utilize uh, Brooke Monroe as their uh, wetland specialist to go out there and she's very good and she's been very uh, helpful to us in the past. So um, that's typically who they send out. So uh, we will get back in touch with you tomorrow, Mr. Nasser, relative to uh, an estimate to get that just the delineation looked at. And then after that, if you, uh, you let us know that you're coming down with that uh, a check, we will forward that off to EPG and start the review process for you, sir. Very good. Outstanding. If, if uh, nobody else has any other questions, then uh, I will, uh, go ahead. I say I'm, I'm good, Kevin. Okay. Then I will entertain a motion to continue the public hearing for uh, the ANRAD uh, for 81 Middleborough Road. And we'll do it in two weeks. I'm hoping if we can get in touch with them, maybe they can get out there and get us some stuff back in two weeks, Mr. Nasser. So, so we'll, we'll do it to the 24th. Obviously, when it gets close, we'll let you know, okay? That sounds great. Thank you, Mr. Perfect. Chairman. So, all right. So I'll, I'll make that motion. Thank you very much. Motion's been made to continue to the 24th, 6 o'clock via Zoom. Can I get a second? I'll second it. Motion made support. If there's no further discussion on the motion, hearing none, roll call vote. Charlie Sullivan. Aye. Charlie Sullivan, aye. Chris Mather. Aye. Chris aye. Mather, aye. Keith Mello. Aye. Hello, aye. Margaret French. Aye. Margaret French, aye. Kevin Damaris, aye. Motion passes unanimously. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank I appreciate you, it. Have a good yeah, night. I, 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 I texted Tom and asked if he was going to join the meeting. I haven't heard anything back, so <laughs> I'm assuming uh, he trusts you and, and us both. <laughs> um, I, I, I figured maybe Zoom was not his thing, so uh, but we'll see. We'll, yeah. uh, for the next meeting, I'll, we'll see if we can get him up to speed. Yeah, I'll, next time I see him around town, I'll, I'll, I'll give him a little tutorial on how to use it. So thank you again, Mr. Nasser. We'll see you in two weeks. Okay, have a good night. Thank you. Yeah, you bye too. Bye. No, you too. Hey, Alex, I, I know I was going to take you next, but you know what? I've got, I've got, two, um, I've got two really minor things. So if, if you don't mind, I'll take them, and then we can just we can close out with you, okay? Great, thanks. Perfect. I, I, all right, the thumbs up. Love it, brother. So uh, we're going to skip to item number eight. This is a request for determination of applicability. This is for 15 point of pines because I see that we have a Kerry Bennett here and Kerry is uh, the owner and the applicant and the representative David Dixon from the DS Dixon Builders Incorporated. The scope of work is construction of new deck off the rear of the house. New deck will be integrated with existing deck and will maintain a 20 foot setback from the outside face of the existing concrete retaining wall. All new footings associated with the work be done by hand. Is this something that we have? Is this on the Dropbox too? So again, you can go back to the Dropbox and uh, what's the Point of Pines, 15 Point of Pines Road. There it is. Where's the sketch? Is there a sketch with that? It's probably a part of that. <clears throat> oh, well, I don't, I don't, well, I don't see it. So are there more than one? Hold on. The crush water existing conditions. All I right. Can. I might have it on the OneDrive. Okay. She, uh, one Carrie, are you there? Yes, I am. Hi, Carrie. Welcome. Thank you. I'm here with my boyfriend, Joe, and my contractor, Dave Dixon, is here, but under under his wife's name. She's a lovely woman, but Dave's here, too. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Joe, and welcome, everybody. Thank you. Uh, we're trying to pull it up. Like I said, we've had problems with our... Uh, with our website, so this might be a little. I will tell you, I've seen the the drawing, and it was a, a nice little drawing. I was here the day that uh, the contractor came in. Honest to God, uh, <laughs> that's that's my that's my wife. Um, <laughs> so, if you would just kindly uh, just speak to what what you'd like to do over there. Yeah. So, I just want to start with I've I've built I've lived on the lake since the 80s. I've had two other homes on the lake. I've done a lot with the Lakeville Conservation Commission, recently downsized to move to Freetown on the lake. So I'm really good at following the rules. <laughs> um, and Nancy Yates will tell you that. 
Um, so basically what we're trying to do is when we had the windstorm come, it like ravaged the house and it destroyed like the whole front and it um, opened up lots of problems that were there with lots of dry rot. So I have windows at the front of the house. People know Mark Connolly. Mark Connolly used to own this house, but it's all rotted and um, now it has black mold and it um, only has two small windows. So what I wanna do is just replace what's there to mimic what's upstairs and then put out a deck so that I can have a deck when you walk out, I'm gonna put in sliders that we can have sliders go out. And I'm hoping to put in a deck for whatever the conservation commission says that we can do. Um, and then Dave will be the one to do it. So he's the one who provided the drawings. So Dave, I don't know if you wanna to speak to anything. Um. Nothing in particular. I, I felt like it was pretty straightforward. Hopefully the drawing kind of depicts what, you know, the, the hope is we can um, attain. Yeah, Dave, it's, it, it is. It's a very straightforward, right? And, and like I said, if this was somewhere where there wasn't a lot of people around, uh, you still should have applied, but, but more than likely this kind of stuff sometimes gets done without coming to Conservation Commission. But you did the right thing for yourself. Yeah, I know that. And the thing is, is that having had, you know, three homes on the lake and having had family on the lake since the 30s, I just like to follow the rules. And Dave totally agreed. We just want to make sure yeah. you have yeah. your blessing. We don't want to do anything that will hurt the lake. I love this no, lake. No, no, no. Listen, just so we can just so we can clarify, right? The proposed activity or the activity that you're proposing is innocuous really you're, you're, you're putting extent really it, it, you're putting an extension on a, on a deck you're not working in the wetlands you're working completely upland yeah. you're digging the footings by hand uh you, you know to some degree some might constitute that as an exempt activity but since it doesn't call that out specifically for for, for the for the money that it costs just to get this little permit and to have the luxury of saying to anybody who questions you here read this it's been vetted. We've done our due diligence. So um, that being said, uh, we just we cannot get this stuff to pull up off of our website for whatever reason. Um, but I can tell you there's a, I have a level of comfort since I stood over his shoulder and told him how to do it. And, uh, <laughs> and, 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 and then we well, <laughs> not how to do it, but what we sh what we require and what we're looking for. And and it was provided to us that day, I, I think came and, and either left the application or came back and dropped it off. So um, I, I have no problem with that. Uh, just let's speak specifically to the proposed uh, siltation control. Uh, I know we talked about, I believe, whether you were gonna use a silt sock or silt fence or hay bales. Uh, have we come up with uh, what we'd like to use on that site? Uh, Kevin, have not at this point. Um, okay, so, so why don't we do this? Because, because the impact is going to be so temporary, right? I, I would say go get a length of straw waddle that, at, that you can maneuver to put around just the area that you are impacting. And again, it's an existing deck that we're adding. I forget how many footings was it? Was it six footings? Um. That's a good question because I I don't I went through my file and I don't have the copy of I made two copies of what I get well, I gave I gave you a copy I kept one and I can't find it all I have is a uh, okay so so the, my point is you're not going back there with a the machine we're not digging up now we're not putting no. a septic system in we're simply post hole digging and put and and again I know it sounds tedious to have to do this but to your point Carrie and Joe at the end of the day you want to do something right and and so here we go so. Uh, I take no exception to that. Uh, we would uh, just condition it that it would, you would have silt sock or siltation control measures mm -hmm. in place. Once they're in, uh, David, why don't you just give us a call down here and one of us can take a ride by just to confirm that it's installed in the right place. How about that? Okay. Yeah, not a problem. Yeah, Dave, I just but, think we should do it all across the lake. It's not that long of a property. We should just do it all across there just so yeah. it's safe. You know, and then all we're doing, oh, like you said, okay. spending, it's not a large piece of water. No, no, I, so I, I think, understand. Yeah, I understand. I just, our job is to yeah. protect the wetlands how, however you can. If you want to put it across the, the length of your property line uh, as it abuts the, excuse me, the pond, that's fine too, guys. That That's fine too. So that being said, uh, does anybody else have any questions? Uh, just to clarify, I would assume you'd want that um, 
sill fence of that wattle at that 20 foot mark off of the, the wall, basically that the edge of. Yeah, again, you know, the happy compromise, you know, let's put it so you have enough area to, to walk around or, or, or wheel a wheelbarrow around if you need to. Okay. Uh, but if you, if you don't have to put it right up against the water, the silt fence is not going to cause a problem, right? With the, uh, with, with, with the, um, with the, so take it with the lake. So I'm, I'm not, not, not at all concerned about that. So, okay. Um, and if you have any questions, David or Carrie or Joe, you just call us and, and we can certainly um, help you. Uh, uh, choose a little. And I've done it before. So, I mean, I can, Dave, I can give you a sense of what we've done in other houses and then they can come inspect it. And if they don't like it, we'll move it. Okay. Not a problem. Don't worry, Kevin. I'll keep a close eye on them. I appreciate that, Mr. Mello. Mr. Mello is our is our resident spy on the lake. He uh he lives over he lives over there. It's just a uh, joke, just a joke. That's right. You I, can just come I, over I know. and help yes, us. We are, we are joking, folks. We are joking. Yeah, but he does live there, but uh, well, Mr. Mello, you can come over and just tell us where to put it. We don't mind. You can you can come over and say right there, we'll do it. <laughs> perfect. You got a good fish in front of your house. I'll come over and uh, we'll take care of it. <laughs> okay, it's perfect. No problem. It's it's it just as easy. I'd rather have you do that. We don't have to move it. All right. Uh, that being said, if there's no other comments or questions, I'll entertain a motion to issue a negative determination number three, that while the uh, proposed work is within a buffer zone to a resource area, it will not dredge, alter, or fill said resource area and does not require the filing of a notice of intent with the condition that, that siltock or siltation control be installed uh, and the Conservation Commission be contacted to uh, sign off on. I'll make, I'll make that, that motion. motion. I'll second Perfect. it. Motion being supported. There's no further discussion on a motion. Hearing none, all those in favor, roll call vote. Charlie Sullivan. Aye. Charlie Sullivan. Aye. Chris Mather. Aye. Chris Mather, aye. Chris Mello. Aye. Chris Mello, aye. Margaret French. Aye. Margaret French, aye. And Kevin Damaris, aye. Motion passes unanimously. So you guys are all set. Uh, we'll get that signed up and we'll send it out to you folks. All right. All right, thank you. thank you guys. Thank you. All right, have a great night, yeah. folks. Yeah. Be safe. You too. Bye. Well. Thank, thank you. you. All right, next on our agenda, Alex, we're getting to you. I promise, buddy. So, next on our agenda, we have a um, request for an extension of order of conditions for 13 Estelle Ave. This is for an applicant named Tom Louise. Uh, if you remember, uh, this is similar, I think, to some of the uh, situations where seawall or the lake wall, if you will, was damaged during the floods and, and over time. And we had given him a permit to rebuild that. In addition, I think he raised his house up a little bit, put a new septic system in, associated grading. Uh, Mr. Louise has not finished the project yet and is respectfully requesting uh, via letter to uh, get a one-year extension. Uh, so uh, I'm inclined uh, to uh, offer or to give him the one-year extension as we have been with many others in the past. So. Unless somebody has a question or a comment or has a problem, um, I'll entertain a motion to grant the uh, one-year extension of the order of conditions for uh, 13 Estelle Ave, Tom Louise. I'll make that motion. Kevin, uh, just a question. Is it mandatory that it's just one year? Oh, golly, we can go up to three years. And I know the applicant asked for three years, but we typically do one year at a time. If the board feels comfortable and wants to go to three years, I, I don't have a problem. And I was just repeating past practice. Right, okay. Uh, if it's been in past practice, why don't we keep with past practice? That's all right. I would just, wait, you know, uh, if the, it could be a longer extension just to give them more time if need. But could be understanding that he's already had you know, three years. So this will be four years to, to, to complete the project. Right. I understand that. I'll go with the past practice. It's one year. I'll, I'll have no problem with that. So motion has been made, uh, if I hear you correctly, to, uh, to give a one-year extension to the order conditions. Can I get a second, please? I'll make that okay. second. Motion is made and supported. There's no further discussion. Hearing none, roll call vote. Charlie Sullivan. Aye. Charlie Sullivan, aye. Chris Mather. Aye. Chris Mather, aye. Keith Mello. Aye. Keith Mello, aye. 
for Margaret French. Aye. Margaret French, aye. You intended to marry? Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Kevin, All we right, can't hear Alex, you anymore. I appreciate your patience. And um, so I will call that back to order. The public hearing for uh, the Millbrook Boggs Restoration Project. This is off of Holland Road. If folks remember about maybe two months ago now, Alex, you uh, came on and gave us a very good presentation, uh, well received by the public and, and by uh, commissioners alike. Uh, and then about three weeks ago, maybe a little bit longer now, we, uh, we went on a little walkabout. Uh, very, very interesting. And I think most of us were uh, left there very excited for the potential of that property. So um, if you would, Alex, just for the record, state your name, and then you can uh, just shed or, or share anything you'd like to. Sure. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and commissioners. It's nice to be in front of you again. My name is Alex Hackman. I'm with the Massachusetts Division of Ecological Restoration, and I'm the project manager for this effort on behalf of the landowner, uh, Mass Wildlife. And Kevin, or Mr. Chairman, we, I was looking at my dates. We did do a site visit on December 19th. It feels like just yesterday with how crazy yeah. things are right now. And um, the presentation that I gave was back in September 13th. So I really uh, appreciate the chance to interact with the commission. Uh, I think we've had a good exchange of information, had some good uh, interaction with neighbors who we know yeah. are concerned with ATVs, illegal yeah. ATVs, especially. Um, you know, we're still kind of wrapping up final touches on engineering. We've got the rest of the permit applications in. Um, and we're hoping to go out to bid this late spring, start construction, probably late summer, if, if everything lines up right. So and get, and get the construction done uh, all next year so that uh, by the fall and early winter, you'll be able to put that to bed. So the next growing season will hit it full, full bore. I think that sounds right. I mean, if, we, if we're able to get a good spread, right. If we're able to get a, make a good start this summer, all through the fall, and then, you know, the soil is covered and frozen and, and the plants start to kind of rebound in the spring, get a growing season. Yeah, I think then by next, by fall 2023, we'll be back with almost full veg cover out there, I would expect. It's exciting, uh, it, at least for, for me, and, and I know the other member uh, uh, that we, we talked afterwards, and it, it, the amount of information you get from a professional, right? Uh, and I, I, I say this, I used to just walk through an area and say, hey, this is nice and pretty. Now I walk through and I notice different things. And just, just you pointing out, you see the vegetation, Clearly, that's wet over there. This was all upland, and you and within that same bog square, you can see the vegetation is, and and we're going to make it all back into a, to a wet area with associated uplands. And I think we're all pretty excited about it to 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 know that that stream is going to run through there with walking paths. And yeah, it's uh, and it got some use. We were out there. It was not warm by any stretch of the imagination. I had I had icicles off the end of my nose. <laughs> Uh, but there were plenty of people out there just enjoying it, walking their their dogs. Down. I'm going to discount the, the the ATVs that were out there. You scared um, them away though, which was great. Yeah, we <laughs> tried, right? We tried, and once they saw, they went to the other end of the place and then left. So, um, so at at this point in time, you said you're working still on some engineering. Is uh, do you have outstanding items that you would rather or prefer us not to vote on tonight? I don't think so. I mean, so what the plan set that we've presented to you shows, depicts different surface treatments, right? We're going to, we need to uncompact the dense agricultural fill layer. And our current approach involves three separate methods. Between now and let's say June, those boundaries might shift a little bit. We might swap out one method for, let's say, instead of using an excavator and doing an acre a day, maybe we bring out a rototiller around the drier edge or a ripper or something that's a little more efficient. Um, so those would be the nature of changes between now and um, when we actually go to bid. Um, what I'm used to with these projects in these last round of minor changes is um, as long as we're not um, 
doing more disturbance than we're projecting in our application. We're not. It's going to be the same footprint of disturbance. Yeah, right. So, so not the, the the same footprint, the same building envelope or mm -hmm. uh, envelope right. of disturbance. Right. Your means and methods, quite honestly, uh, we oftentimes allow the contractors to to, and all we ask Alex on these bigger projects in or near large wetlands is. If you're going to have large scale equipment or any equipment over there, we need to have oil spill and, and definitely and hazardous mm -hmm. cleanup that are suitable for that size machine. Right. Absolutely. So, so what do I mean? You, you, you know, a large vehicle is going to have gallons and gallons and gallons of hydraulic mm -hmm. fluid and other stuff. There. Don't bring a little, you know, one tidy cat little. Uh, yeah. So wh whatever it is that you need to be. Right. So that's, it's pretty standard in the industry. Yeah. And again, I think for people to understand, this is a state proposed project and they're restoring wetlands to more their original shape and function. So the conservation commission would be hard pressed to get in the way of such an endeavor. Um, so so uh, really, I think uh, in my opinion, I, I, I I can't tell you how happy we are to have this project here in, in town. Uh, I've already spoken to town administration and when the time comes or we get closer to the start of this, uh, we're gonna invite you to the selectmen's meeting to just right. give an overview of, of, of this project. Because again, oftentimes folks like you get unnoticed. It, 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 you do all the heavy lifting and nobody ever sees uh, what, what, what goes into it, right? They just see the omelet. They don't see what goes into making it. Well, I'd be so, delighted to do that, Mr. Chairman. Good, good, good. good. That's great. Um, if um, I could just interject one point quickly, please. Mr. Chairman, about just to wrap up my point earlier about the various surface treatments, the envelope of our work is not going to change. The resource area, temporary disturbance is not going to change. But those final um, adjustments to what we're doing where, what, what I'm used to in other communities is we simply send the final 100% stamp plan set, a copy of that back to the regulatory agencies who have issued us the permits, typically with something like a 75 or 90% done plan set. And I'm used to seeing a condition that says, you know, when you wrap up 100% design, send those into the commission and highlight any notable changes to us. The only one I can think about, it would be these minor um, adjustments in how we're gonna uncompact the soil. And the other one is, um, we still need to bring the cost down a little bit. And so there might be a few places where um, where we leave a little bit of one of those long earthen dikes sticking out as kind of an observation platform. <laughs> say we need to That'd save. Cool. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? It, th yeah. That's from now until the final, literally it's, we just need to figure out some ways to reduce the cost. And that means in maybe a few places moving a little less dirt and it would be to create those kind of amenities that's it. And if it's suitable with, with the commission and you, Mr. Chairman, what I would do, given the no difference in impact, is just submit that 100% stamp plan set to you with the other regulators upon um, completion. Yeah. So, Alex, that's a very good point. I should have mentioned that earlier. We typically do that, particularly yep. when there are uh, many uh, permitting agencies, to your point, right? Yep. You've got, uh, you're going to go state, federal government, and, mm -hmm. and, and the like. So, uh, yeah. So what we usually do is say, okay, we approve the plans, even in their 75%. Uh, we ask you to send us once you've got a fund and then we make a determination. Are the, okay, changes, got it. Are the changes proposed in this hundred percent or additions or subtractions? Does it rise to the level that requires another public hearing, Alex? Okay, Clearly got it. it won't, but again, uh, to stay with consistency on our side, Perfect. So yeah, one of the conditions uh, would be uh, that uh, any uh, once you get to 100% plan set, that plan set be provided for us, and we will have an opportunity to look at it and make a determination. We'll put it on an agenda, Alex, and, okay, we'll, great. and we'll probably ask you to come on and tell us a little bit about what the changes are, and then we'll great. make a determination at that point in time. Perfect. Uh, That's great. Thank you. Sure. Sure. Uh, additionally. Uh, I know we talked about, excuse me, on site, and and I think it would be really nice if if your group could, excuse me, potentially 
do some sort of drone work out there to get a before, after, during construction kind of thing. I, I understand sometimes uh, logistics of those can be can be a bit onerous, uh, right. but if at all possible, and I know we briefly talked about it, if at all possible, I'd like to see that. So it's not a condition of approval, but I think it will go a long way to uh, to show people what what can be done and what should be done in instances like this. So, uh, like I said, I, I wouldn't want to put an official condition on there, Alex, that says you have to do it because you never know. Uh, but I think it would be nice. Mr. Chairman, so we did, um, we were able to grab, fortunately, a, a pre-restoration full site ortho mosaic. So we, our engineering firm, we were able to hire to do a drone flight and let's see, I think getting permission to do that took me six months and it took about one, two, maybe three conversations with the lead attorneys at the Executive Office of Environmental Affairs because we don't have blanket permission to use drones yet. It's a case by case approval. I, I welcome the day when we can fly drones routinely to catch that valuable data. But right now it's, um, it's challenging. So we have the pre, at some point when the policy loosens, we will get out there and do a post. Cause like you said, this huge site warrants eyeballs from the sky to see the nooks and crannies. Alex, let, let, let me ask you this. Um, I know a few people here in town. I, and one gentleman, I think, or two of them actually have their licenses. They have commercial grade drones. Um, maybe when you start and you get out there, maybe we can just ask them if they'd be so kind as to go down there and maybe just coordinate with you what they should fly over and and it would, it would be for us, not for you, right? I mean, we'll give you the results, but I'm, what I'm saying is you wouldn't be on the hook to coordinate and or pay. And I don't imagine that we would have to pay, but but just so you understand, it's not, I can see the, I can see in your right, oh, shoot, my budget's going. Oh, no, well, no. <laughs> fortunately, so, it's pretty low cost. It's just hard, it's just hard for us to get legal approval, but I, I, I expect we'll be in touch a lot during construction and let's, let's maybe park that for coordination. It'd be wonderful to partner with you your commission yeah. for data collection yeah. during the project. That would be amazing. I think that would be, listen, I, I, I think that's the size and scale of this project. It's that big. And I think it's going to have that much positive impact that it should be a shot. Alex, you're not from around here, but those of us that are on the board and are, we know oftentimes we, we can get some negative attention with some of the activities that have gone on in the past or, or, or currently. This is a feel good story that everybody can embrace. It's going to open up people to a home that if they don't already know about it, walking opportunities right now, Great. we're spoiled. We have the Freetown Fall River State Forest, yeah. right? We're spoiled in our town. Uh, in the last 20 years, we've we've probably put well over a thousand, if not more acres into open space and Great. recreation, right? We, Great. Uh, but, but this has taken the same concept but then making it even better because it's, it's going to restore it back and then it allows us to utilize it allows the general public to go over there right you can hunt you can mm -hmm. fish I, I i guess if if you were so inclined uh but but you can recreate on there and, right. and that's that's a good thing Definitely. so so i think it's you know something that should quite honestly be put on the cover of our, our annual report at some point in time that's how important i think it is for our community so so that being said, does anybody from the uh, public or anybody from the board have any questions for Alex? No. No? Okay, perfect. All right. Uh, that being said, then, uh, if there's nothing else that you want to add, Alex, then I will, uh, I will entertain a motion to approve the plans as submitted in their current form uh, with the condition that once a complete 100% plan set is has been uh, has has been created, uh, that we would be uh, forwarded that plan set for consideration uh, of any uh, changes and whether it warrants filing a, a, another notice of intent at that time. So I I want to Did motion get made? Yes. Motion's been made. I need a second. I'll support it. Motion made. Supported. There's no further discussion on the motion. Hearing none, all those in favor, roll call vote. Charlie Sullivan. Aye. Charlie Sullivan, aye. Chris Mather. Aye. Chris Mather, aye. Keith Mello. Aye. Keith Mello, aye. Margaret French. Aye. Margaret French, aye. Kevin DeMello. Motion passes unanimous, Alex. Thanks, man. Thank you.
Hey, how'd you make out with your wife's birthday? Everything went good, huh? Thanks to you. Thank you for giving me some uh, (laughs) leeway on the date of that visit. I just want to thank commissioners, all of you. Um, We will try to do you proud on the best project possible. And if this leads to more partnerships between our offices in the future, that would be a delight. It's been really wonderful to get to know you all. Thank you very much. Look forward to work with you in the future, my friend. Thank you. Well, I say that. Unfortunately, Alex, unfortunately, I know. I know. Uh, and I don't know if the rest of the commissioners know. Mm-hmm. And I thought I've told them, but uh, next Monday, I start my new job here in town. I'll be uh, the new board of health agent in town, which is going to take up a lot of time and, and, and all. And uh, so I, I've, I've had to make a decision that I'm going to be taking a back seat and, and removing myself from many of the boards and committees that I've been involved with for so long. Uh, so I anticipate that uh, I will be off the Conservation Commission by the end of June, the latest, so that the new round of appointments, they will be able to appoint somebody new. Uh, obviously, I will always be a friend of the Conservation Commission. Should anybody need anything, questions or whatever, uh, I will still be having an active role here in town. It's just that after 22 years now, um, it's it's time. And so... Uh, I'll be around. You'll be around, Alex. I'm sure we'll, we'll get together. So thank you very much. I, I appreciate everything. And uh, we'll see you soon. Be safe, my friend. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Bye now. Okay. Next on our agenda, um, do we have uh, Mr. Bob Weaver here? We had a request for Mr. Weaver. would like to address the board. I can give some, uh, I can give a little bit of a backstory. Uh, This is in reference to, I believe it was his parents parcel or property at 18 through 24 Mill Street. Uh, Mr. Weaver had been utilizing that property to store, he's in the car business. He was storing uh, some old, older cars and and, and all there. Um, Unfortunately ran afoul of zoning and and was asked to clean up and and has cleaned up, right? I don't think any cars are there at this current time. Uh, But in the meantime, his next door neighbor, who uh, near as I can tell, 40 years ago, if not longer, had dug a little depression in the backyard and they used it as an ice skating pond. And over the last 40 years, it's become a a natural waterway. Uh, uh, Mr. Weaver asked me to go out to his parcel and property to look at it as a complaint that water was coming onto his property and was making a statement that, you know, the conservation commission needs to do something. And so I told him when I was on site and I will follow up with again tomorrow, he's clearly not here, that uh, yes, there is water getting onto his property. There is an ancient, and when I say ancient, right, there's a stone footbridge that goes over it, right? So. There's an old swale that's there that has historically taken water. Over time, it's overgrown. It's got full of leaves and there's a stone wall that goes through it. And I, I and so what's happening is the water course has kind of changed directions when it gets really wet and starts to go into his field. Uh, his, 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 his position was that somehow that's a violation of the Wetlands Protection Act and we need to do something about it. So I went back to look at historical photos and, and, and I told him when I was on site, this is a civil matter typically, somebody's allowing water to get onto your property in an injurious manner, that is not a conservation issue. Unless I can go back and see in the last however long, if they had done anything obvious, did they fill in wetlands? Did, and on, on the GIS uh, that I can see and from looking at the site, the stuff that's been there has been there a while and a long time. It's just that May has filled in with leaves over time. We've had a wet season and um, and truth be told, uh, a tree that was near the ditch on Mr. Weaver's property uh, because it root ball was wet and we had that really big windstorm month and a half ago, uh, fell down on, one, on a couple of his cars. So there's more to just a wetland consideration to this. There are outstanding items in the civil world also. And I told Mr. Weaver, and I'll state it for the world to hear, as long as I'm on this board, and I would suggest going forward that the board does not allow themselves to get put into the middle of a civil matter. Too often we are asked to 
to go and do something, if you will, uh, and just to find out that it's just one neighbor or one person doesn't much like the other one, and it's really not within our purview. So I was hoping Mr. Weaver was going to be here tonight so we could hear us say that to him, uh, but, but he's not. So just wanted to keep your breast on that. Uh, next thing, we have two sets of minutes we have from June 2nd and from November 29th. Uh, if you've had an opportunity to review the minutes, I will entertain a motion on both sets. I'll make a motion. We accept them as uh, published. Thank you very much. I need a second. I'll second it. Motion being supported. Is there any further discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Roll call vote. Charlie Sullivan. Aye. Molly Sullivan, aye. Chris Mather. Aye. Chris Mather, aye. Uh, Keith Mello. Aye. Keith Mello, aye. Margaret French. Aye. Margaret French, aye. Kevin Damaris, aye. So I'm just seeing on here, and I'm looking, and we have one member. Who is Rusty Shackelford? I mean, you don't have to say. That's fine. I just love the name. I think it's from some movie or something. But uh, <laughs> anyway. Um, what's that? All right. So does anybody else have anything? If not, Margaret, thanks again for joining us. Welcome. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, that being said, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll make it. I'll second it. Discussion. Roll call vote. Charlie Sullivan. Aye. Nice Sullivan, aye. Chris Mapp. Keith Mello. Aye. 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 Sorry. Another aye. Aye. Keith Mello, aye. There's a bit of a delay, I know. I'm sorry. Margaret French. Aye. Margaret French, aye. Kevin Damaris, aye. Motion passes unanimous. Again, thank you, folks. Uh, be safe, and uh, we'll see you and talk to you in two weeks. Okay, good All night. Right. Good night, thank good night you. guys. Yep, Kevin, see you by the fire station tomorrow. Yeah, yes, sir. What time, sir? Well, I'm there for 24 hours, so whenever you get a chance. <laughs> All right. Uh, it'll probably be earlier in the morning. I, I have uh, some things to do. All right. That's uh, fine. Okay. Thank you. All right. I'll talk to you. Bye. Yeah, bye.